Get into position. Close your eyes. Breathe deeply. And what do you sense? What are your immediate sensations right now? Try to stay with whatever seems to be breath. And for the time being, whatever comes up with the breath, think of it as part of the breath as well. You'll have some mental images, but try to keep them focused on the breath. Any other mental images, just let them go. The same with thoughts. Any thoughts that deal with anything else, let them go. Pay attention to the thoughts that are about the breath, and see if you can settle down on this level of awareness, where you're aware of um, what is immediately apparent. Don't try to go behind the scenes. Don't think about the narratives, who is meditating, or where you are. Just what are you sensing with your eyes closed? There will be mental events, physical events. And in the beginning, think of them all coming together. That's what the concentration is, pulling these things together, making them concentric, all centered on the breath. No, there will come a point where you start analyzing things, but the analysis stays on the surface. We tend to talk in terms of deep underlying causes, but when the Buddha uses the word cause, especially as it relates to what you're experiencing here as you meditate, he uses the word samudhya, something that arises together. He doesn't use the word underlying. Think of his term for causality, ira bhajyata. We translate that as this, that conditionality. But actually, a literal translation would be this conditionality. The point being that the causes and the effects are right here on the level of your immediate awareness. We're not trying to peer behind the scenes. We're trying to see patterns as they appear on the surface of your awareness. Of course, there's the question of what's hidden. And a lot of what's hidden is hidden because it's so fast. A little thought will appear in the mind, and immediately it will disappear. Things will come together in the mind, and they seem to be a block. But they're very much like those bird songs, where a bird will sing a series of notes, and then it sounds like the bird is singing about five or six notes all at once. And it turns out the bird is not singing five or six notes all at once. It's singing arpeggios, but they're so fast that they're faster than our ears can pick up. Our refresh rate is too slow. So a lot of what's happening in the mind is just like that. It's all glommed together because our powers of observation are too slow. So instead of going beneath the scenes, we want to focus more precisely on what are the scenes, what are the sensed. Get our awareness, get our alertness. We're focused right here. And as we get quicker, things will seem to slow down. So that what sounded like a squawk actually becomes a series of notes. You can see, oh, this follows on that, that follows on this. And it's all right here. So 
start learning how to watch more carefully what's right here. Look for patterns right here. In the beginning, of course, it's more a question of what will allow you to settle down. And then it gets into distinctions. As you breathe in, the breath feels comfortable. After a while, you want to ask, which sensation is the breath sensation? Which sensation is the comfort sensation? One is a physical phenomenon. How you experience the body. You don't have to worry about well, what's actually going on in the body away from your awareness. When the Buddha talks about body, especially as you're meditating, it's the body as you experience it. And then what's the feeling? The feeling tone. Two different aggregates, which we've glommed together. And can you see them as separate things, separate notes in the bird song? The same goes for perceptions, thought constructs, acts of consciousness. They're all happening right here. Our problem is that we tend to be conspiracy theorists. What's happening behind the scenes? Who's operating the lasers that shot lightning over Northern California last year? We have a sense of our self. We have a sense of the world in which our self operates. And those ideas are behind-the-scene ideas. The Buddha tries to reduce them to what's on the surface. The world, he says, is simply the six sense spheres, events of the six sense spheres, and the feelings that arise from contact, all of which are happening right here. Same with your sense of self. It's just the aggregates. What are they? They're events, they're actions that are happening right here on this level. And the more you try to elaborate a theory that gets behind, behind, behind the scenes, the further you're getting away from what the Buddha wants you to look at. Is what are the patterns right on the surface? Pain is also happening right on the surface. It's samudhiya, it's cause, is happening right on the surface. The craving is happening right here. The contact is happening right here. What we want to do is see things as they slow down, as our awareness speeds up. So try to stay on this level as much as you can. And as your awareness speeds up, You'll find that what the Buddha has to say to divide things up into different aggregates, different sense spheres, different elements or properties. will begin to sort themselves out right here on this level. And this is what dependent core rising is all about, learning how to watch what's happening on this level. For most of us in the beginning, it's like reading stream of consciousness. It's all very random. But the Buddha says there is a pattern, if you watch carefully. So in the beginning, we focus simply on these things as they're glommed together. Create a state of concentration out of them. In other words, stay right here. And the more still you are, the more they'll begin to separate out. This is what discernment is all about, seeing distinctions and seeing connections between those distinct things. They're not absolutely distinct. If they were absolutely distinct, there would be no connection. But seeing where the connections are, what influences what. Where is the cause, the samudhiya, the arising together, arising together on this level? And 
And when you see how ephemeral it all is, that's when you begin to develop this passion, disenchantment. And when you see how those questions that people sometimes ask, well, is there really a self behind this? Or is there really a world out there? Are all irrelevant. Buddha is trying to get us to deconstruct those speculations so that the energy we put into the speculations can be more usefully focused right here on the surface of your awareness. Because that's where the problem of stress and suffering happen. That's the level on which it can be solved.